The sister continued. Delighted by this self-discovery, the queen exclaimed, At last I have attained that which is to be attained or known. This is the ultimate knowledge. It's the only thing that's ultimately worth knowing is the nature of your own consciousness or the nature of consciousness within which you arise. Now there is no loss. Nothing's lost. Everything is gained. All that's lost are notions. Even the mind and the senses are but the reflections of consciousness, though they are unreal independently of consciousness. The supreme consciousness alone exists. It is the supreme truth, untainted by any impurity, forever in a state of perfect equilibrium and devoid of ego sense. So it's not my consciousness, it's not your consciousness, it's consciousness. Me and you are the mechanisms which arise within consciousness. Once this truth is realized, it shines constantly without setting. That's realized and established in, otherwise it comes and goes. Although it doesn't come and go, but you come and go with respect to it. It is this consciousness that is known by various names, Brahman, Supreme Self, etc. In it there is no division into subject-object and their relation. Knowledge. In other words, we no longer say, I know this. Or there is a me here in relation to a thing there. Consciousness becomes conscious of its own consciousness. It cannot be realized otherwise. There's only subject, subject. There's a reflection. It's like the arrow of attention pointing to itself. The attention is like an arrow. It's always pointing here, pointing there. It can also point towards thoughts and feelings and sensations within the body. So the attention is like a, a point radiating outwards in 360 degrees. But insight is about turning all these points back in. We can turn the attention right round back in in itself. So this is the trick, the trick of self-inquiry. This is when consciousness becomes conscious of its own consciousness. And it can't be realized otherwise. This is what I mean by the term spirituality, when the attention is turned on itself. There's nothing spiritual or non-physical or non-scientific about it. It's simply the attention directing itself to itself. It's a revelatory thing to do. It turns the way you think about the world, the universe, upside down. The implication being that we've got it upside down in the first place. It is this consciousness alone that is manifest as the mind intellect and the senses. This world appearance too is but consciousness apart from which nothing is. Consciousness does not undergo any change. The only apparent change is the illusory appearance, which is illusory and therefore not real. It's illusory in the sense of notional. It's all notions. Everything we take for reality is nothing more than notions which we agree with. What we normally understand of as reality is a consensual thing, it's something that we've agreed upon, not something that we've realized directly for ourselves. But the truth is something that we do realize directly for ourselves. It's not something we get told by somebody or that we read in some book. In an imaginary ocean, imaginary waves arise. The mind stuff itself is the ocean and the waves are of the mind stuff too. Even so, the world appearance arises in consciousness and is therefore non-different from it. I am pure consciousness, devoid of ego sense and all-pervading. There is neither birth nor death for this consciousness. It is not subject to destruction, for it is like space. It cannot be cut or burnt. It is pure light of consciousness without defect. I am free from all delusion. I am at peace. All these gods, demons and numerous beings are essentially unmade, for they are non-different from the consciousness. The appearance is illusory, 
even as soldiers made of clay are clay, not soldiers. The seer, subject, and the seen, object, are in reality the one pure consciousness. How has this delusion which gives rise to concepts like this is oneness and there is duality come into being? In whom does that delusion exist? Whose is it? I rest in nirvana, liberation or enlightenment, without the least mental agitation, having realised that all that is, whether sentient or insentient, is pure consciousness. There is no this, nor I, nor the other. There is no being, nor non-being. All this is peace. Having thus realised, Chudala rested in supreme peace. Mm -hmm.